So come back once again to Edgebaston Golf Club to pick up the story of Olympian Kelly Southerton, who is behind me having a golf lesson with her coach, Phil. Today, we're gonna to cover some short game shots and give you the really key points that you need to hit better shots around the grid. Right, so we've got Kelly back. Kelly, how are you? I'm good, thank you. What a beautiful day. It is a beautiful day. Back end of the summer. You're on the, we're on the chipping green, so we're going to do some shorter shots today. But since we last spoke uh, a few weeks back, how's the golf been? It's been really good. So I've played my first 18 and done two nines. Um, the, first eight, the first 18 was in wet, damp conditions up in Preston. Yeah. But it was a really, really good experience. Um, I shot 114. I don't think that was I, too bad. I, that's OK. <laughs> I reckon for first 18, most people would be north yeah. of that so that's pretty good it was just a long four hours yeah. but enjoyed obviously the shandy at the end um <laughs> but no it was a really good experience and then i've now i'm i'm a member at edgebaston golf club i've now taken advantage of playing more often so i've done quite a few nines yeah. so i'm just learning the game and playing not really necessarily playing with anybody but just learning the course and learning how yeah. to play and what shots i need to play so yeah i'm now moving on to the game side of stuff. do you feel that's helped you get a little bit more kind of excited about golf actually taking it onto the course because i think on the driving range is one thing, but getting yeah. on the course and actually figuring out different shots, do you feel more excited about golf going forwards? Yeah, so the first nine I played, I, sh I shot 59 on the first nine, and then the other day I did 57, and I had some two pars in there, but I had a clanger of a 10. <laughs> but so that's the competitive element, oh, I can yeah, beat yeah. that next time. So every time I go, I I've got something to aim for. So yeah. now, not just about improving my technique in golf, but I've actually got a score to beat. So the next thing now is I need to start playing with people and get myself a handicap. Sub 100. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Excellent. Right, we're going to bring Phil in. We've got Phil, your coach. We are going to go through a couple of shots today. We're going to go through a chip and run yeah. and a high lob, and we're going to help the viewers here with some basic tips to play those shots. Right, so Kelly, you're desperate to get on the course, <laughs> play some golf. Phil, she needs a couple of shots that she can kind of use up and around the green. So what's the, what's the first shot that you really wanted to teach Kelly when she's going to go and play? Well, I think from the natural progression of the putter to then go to the bump and run is the easiest progression really and the, the best one for the, the highest percentage shot when you're on the golf course. That can be used pretty much anywhere around the fringe okay. uh, unless you've got to get over something but we, can, we okay. can go into that. So you went for a bump and run? Bump and run shot. Kelly, what, what was your, did you know any short game shots or was this all new to you? Do you kind of know what they were, what they looked like or what they were called or were you going through this completely blind? Just knew that you just got on the green and you putted the ball. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do, isn't it? <laughs> but no, I didn't know. You know, I knew I've heard of chip and yeah. um, and pitching and wedge, but I didn't really know what they were. Okay, so. fine. Right, Phil, we're going to get you to go through your your kind of top three things that you told Kelly to help her. Yeah. First thing. Okay, so setup, like we did with uh, full swing, setup is key. So with the uh, chipping, uh, we're using a nine iron here, so we don't want to go with something with too much loft. Uh, fortunately, Kelly didn't have her wedges, so we, we only have the facility of like a nine iron and a pitching wedge. So we're going for nine iron. Uh, first of all, we get it to sand a little bit closer than normal compared to full swing. Narrow with the feet, yep. keeping that ball position in the middle. Okay. And I should say, we're going to go for that yeah, yellow flag down at the end. I'm sure that will become evident in a minute when <laughs> Kelly hits one, which flag yeah, we're going I mean, for. Come on. Okay. So it's kind of narrow stance, ball middle, and that would obviously be different to what you would do for your your driver swing, yeah. your seven iron swing, and stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. And I, yeah. It's, very, it's just knowing how close to be at the ball, where your body position is. Um, it's, I think if you get that and you know that, what each shot you want to play, the position, I think then you that's half the battle, yeah. isn't it? Okay. It Go on is, then. And it is a natural progression of putting. So yeah. this is the thing that's closest to putting. But the, the difference is really here that we're going to be making contact with the ground. So to get someone used to hitting the ground yeah, yeah. Is, is key, first of all. So we're expecting this ball just to go in the air a little bit, just carry the fringe and then roll out the, the rest of the way. We're and then land in the hole? In the hole, yeah. She's done it before. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely. That could be good. That could go. It could be really good. No. But this is, you, you can't get away from the fact that you need this shot, don't you? Every, you know, even if you're a complete beginner, right through to an advanced. <laughs> should we just take a moment to have a look at, have a look at that? Do you want to finish the video there? Yeah, to finish it. Um, but yeah, you, you need this shot, don't you? You're always going to be just off the green, and, and it's something that, it's almost like a staple shot that you need to learn, don't you? It's so versatile because you can use the same setup technique with different clubs as well that's going to give you a different outcome. Okay. So mm -hmm. that, that's something that we covered as well. So we started here with 9-iron. Nine <laughs> You could go to something like a seven iron just to give you that lower, lower control. You don't, 
I think we'll stick with a nine. We'll stick with a nine. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. Maybe. laughs> okay, so the second thing that you wanted to highlight in terms of you know, helping to play the shot. So it was the connection of the arms to the body. Okay. So with putting, we're typically using just the shoulders. Yeah. Uh, here we're, we're doing the same, just using the shoulders. And Kelly is trying to use, if you can see on the camera, Kelly's trying to keep this triangle between her two shoulders and her hands and not flip the wrist and try and add too much. Okay, so trying to keep a bit of connection through, not through here. Not <laughs> wristy, which is what we see a lot yeah. in, in beginners, is that they're trying to scoop yeah. the ball. And did you see that a little bit with Kelly, that she was a little bit, yep. a little bit wristy? Yeah, okay. which causes that real hot, yeah. thin all the way through the back yeah, of the yeah. green and, and no control. Do you okay. want a ball to it? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd say, you know, you as a, as a coach and you coach all levels of golf, that's probably a, a commonality across yeah. people. Handicap golfers is too much, too, too much wrist much. action. Yeah. And, you know, as Kelly can demonstrate here, you know, you don't need the wrist, do you? You know, you can you can make that ball advance down there, as you can demonstrate now, yeah, without I using would, those wrists. I would just be that. And does that just feel natural to you? Yeah, yeah. that's what you do. Um, that's what you think you should do. But yeah. You know. There you go, really good. Is that going to be even closer? Be even closer. Go on. Oh. oh. Lovely. Look at that. Perfect. <laughs> This is such good luck. <laughs> no, it's not luck. <laughs> We're going to get you three in a row in a minute. I know, yeah. Right, final thing, third thing that you wanted Kelly to focus on. So the real important thing, like I said, with putting, the difference is that you're not making contact with the floor with putting. So you shouldn't, anyway. You shouldn't make contact with the floor with putting. So for Kelly to, to get her used to hitting the ground, it's useful to put a tee in the ground and get used to striking the tee. Okay. okay. Then you can sort of graduate to a ball. But actually just making contact with that tee first, some people will have just putted yeah. and this will be the first time hitting the ball. Yeah, and they're so used to just yeah. missing the ground with the yeah. club. They Perfect. don't know where they're trying to hit in relation to the ball. So okay. the tee drill is quite good. We'll just put the ball on the tee there. I'm actually very good at missing the ground. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are. Yeah. So <laughs> That's my problem. I just want you to intentionally try and sweep that tee, okay? Forget about the ball, just sweep the tee. Yeah, Lovely. really good. So her focus there is there on, her focus is not on the ball, it's on something that's done yeah. before. Because I think, you know, hand-eye coordination, if you're looking at the top of the ball, you can easily align the bottom of the club with, with the top yeah. of the ball. But having that focus more under it, and I think the key point you make, make there is that these shots, we have to make contact with the ground. You know, and so many people are, are under the impression that you don't have to make contact there. And like you say, if you go and putting and then to this, it's so important to have that, have that concept, isn't it? Yeah, because I like to hit the top of the ball with the bottom of my club. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a famous thing. And then it bobbles not very far and then you've wasted a shot and it's frustrating because you know what you need to do. So having that slightly different thought process while hitting actually gets you used to where you should be hitting. So yeah. That's helpful. Okay. But I think we're going to make it a little bit harder now because we're going to try and go for a different shot, a little bit more of a high tarot shot. We're going to head down the bottom and do a high lob. High lob. <laughs> right, Phil, come to a different spot around the green. Same green, but the other side. So what's the kind of second shot that you gave Kelly to use around the greens after that bump and run? So I guess this is the shot that everyone wants to learn. This is the, this is the glamour shot, I guess. But this comes with its own own risk. And, and not necessarily here would you would you take the shot on, but because we're on the short game area, yep. it sort of lends itself to it. So this is this is the shot where if you're before a bunker and you've got to get over it, yeah. it's taken a pinch of salt. So I, w I wouldn't go for this shot all the time. Chip and run is where we're at, but this one, ne you need this shot to get around the golf course because you've got to get over obstacles. Yeah. So club choice, did you change that? So uh, Ke Kelly's just recently got her tailor-made uh, wedges, special speciality wedges. Um, so it's not a shot that we've done a lot of, no. um, because Kelly's been playing with just a pitching wedge. Yeah, really hard with that really club, hard, isn't it? Yeah, really hard. So this is specifically designed for this shot. Okay. Um, so we, we started a little bit with setup again. Okay. So Kelly, a little bit further back from the bump and run, a little bit wider with the feet, ball position still central, okay. and just a tiny little bit of shaft lean. Now, what you'll see when Kelly puts the club behind the ball is that Kelly has a tendency just to close the face a little bit. So we want a nice square club face. That's that's key because we want a lot. Yeah, yeah. As soon as you close it, it's lower, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So you got her to effectively move a little bit closer to a full swing, a little further away, a yeah. little wider stance, yeah. trying to almost bridge that gap between the chip and the, and the full swing. Yeah. Should we get you to hit one first before we move on to the next thing? Yeah, I've got Go on then. I was eager. Okay. Have another go. But that is that is the shot, isn't it? That's the risk there, and that's when a, a, a good like four. If you're on for a four, that becomes a like yeah. a nine. So that's why this shot is so high risk. And I guess that shot might bring us on to 
the second thing that you did in a moment. Good. Good shot. Okay, so what's the second thing you did? You've got a setup right, you've got ball position, nice middle, bit wider stance. Next thing. So similar to the bump and run is strike. Um, now with this shot we need more speed because we've got less, uh, we've got more loft, yep. so we need more speed to get it to yep. that white flag. So with speed comes a lot of different factors. But we go again with the T, and we're trying to hit this T a little bit firmer and knock it out of the ground. So really focus on the T here, sweeping the T. A little bit more speed. Okay. It's a more, lot more speed, but didn't the tea's still there, isn't it? Yes. So I guess that's the feedback that club wasn't possibly yeah. kind of low enough. So again, you're working strike here, aren't you? Trying to get the, the the contact point, you know, correct with the ground and have yeah. that relate to strike. Better. Beautiful. Yeah, really good. Third thing. So a third thing, and I think this this is key really because it's such a high tariff shot. You've got a lot of pressure on this trying to get up and over something. So actually feeling relaxed and allowing the body to turn yeah. rather than this sort of rigid bump and run style that we did before. The relaxing mm. part is the hardest part, but actually following through and letting that club turn with your body okay. and using more speed mm -hmm. is, is what where we went really. Okay. So it wasn't such an up and down swing. It was more of a relaxed limbs and turn that body all the way through. Okay, so you're trying to focus a little bit more on getting this body position. Yeah, yeah so I guess as, as the shot gets, as you need more speed, which you're saying you do for the shot, you need the body to have a little bit more of a roll in that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so let's let's see that one. And I'll get, I'm going to add to that. I think I get a bit scared of doing that because I think oh, I'm going to really smash it somewhere. Yeah, yeah. You think if you put more body in it, it's just going to go further, but not necessarily, is it? Just... Because yeah. we're using the loft of the club, because we're using our most loft. Yeah. yeah. So this is a 56, isn't it? 50, yeah, so 58. Oh, 58. So there's yeah. loads of loft on there, isn't there? So as long as we get the strike, it should go up. Yeah, good shot. Really good shot. Beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> I don't think we said actually, but that is the flag we're going for, that yeah, white flag on top of the hill, wasn't it? That was perfect. So you've carried it up the hill. That's great. Perfect. Okay, we're going to hit one more, but that was perfect. So it's interesting to, you know, for anyone out there who's, who's struggling with a short game, it's just understanding, you know, thinking about what is the shot you want to play? What does that look like? Is it a low running shot or is it a higher shot? And then just matching the setup. And then the key thing is for all these shots, we've got to get the strike right. But it's just understanding, you know, one was very much a kind of little rock of the shoulders. This one's definitely a little bit more of a a body turn isn't it and I guess you know if you get them a little bit wrong one set up with one body and it just doesn't work does it so it's just it's about understanding the differences which as a newer golfer it's a bit like pff, and, and a lot of things I think that's key in Kelly's practice so when Kelly practices alone uh, she's varying the shot so you, you do a little bit of block practice yeah a little bit of bumper runs and a yeah. little bit of lofted but then you tie it in with putting as well to make yeah. it, yeah, yeah. Yeah, make yeah. it real life yeah yeah I so, think that's really key so would you come out here with like one or two golf balls and just go around the green and just hit some different shots and just I mix always, it up a little bit? I come out with six or eight yeah. and do a certain level of shots and then aim for a flag and then see where they are and then obviously finish them with a putt sometimes. Yeah. Um, Perfect. So I, yeah, so I try and combine two shots together because that's Perfect. real, isn't it? That's what you do yeah, yeah, on the course. So, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Right, I'm not sure if you better get closer than that last one, but let's see if you can have a go. Oh, wow. Oh, you might. Great shot. Really good. Perfect. Well, I think there's some valuable information out there for any of you struggling with your short game. A few little key points you can follow there to help you play the chip and run of the high shot. Beautifully demonstrated by Kelly. <laughs> and we will pick Kelly's journey up again in a few weeks' time. We'll try and get onto that course and see how you can put the lesson and the short game into practice. So thanks for your time, Kelly. Phil, thanks for your time as well. And thank you for watching.